Partisan experts representing psychiatry, law, political science, economics, history, journalism, climate and nuclear science gathered at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. for a conference entitled The More Dangerous State of the World <coughs> and the Need for Fit Leadership, subtitled The Much More Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. This is the second time the group has met to share their concerns. The first was just ahead of the 2020 election. Their analysis of the dangers of a future Trump presidency was terrifying. The takeaway is that this is not a drill. It's a national emergency. There is consensus that Trump is a threat not only to democracy, but also a national security threat to the world. Again, this is not a political position. It's a medical one. But the event itself and the findings of its panel and their analysis of the threat has been censored by the corporate media. Ask yourself why not a single news organization has covered this important conference or its recommendations. Donald Trump turned the world upside down. The conflict we see not just politically across the United States, but in Ukraine and Gaza, Iran and Lebanon, can be attributed to his presidency. We can see that legal methods have failed to stop him. Political approaches have failed and military means have not been able to prevent the dangerousness of Donald Trump. Left unchecked, Trump continues to run his mouth, knocking the world off its axis. This is the first of two videos bringing you highlights of the World Mental Health Coalition's conference and its findings, starting with General and Dr. Stephen Zanakis, retired Brigadier General and Medical Corps Officer of the United States Army. Our work as military physicians, we were called on frequently. It was uh, fundamental to our practice that so we would do evaluations for fitness for duty. We had to respond to a request of our leaders to say, is this person, should this person be cleared here, have a security clearance? Uh, can this person be put back into the cockpit? Should this surgeon go to the OR? Should this, we have a, what we call the nuclear surety program. Should this person have access to nuclear weapons? Now that was the call of the leader. That was the decision of the commander to make, to decide what, who was going to be assigned where, what their responsibilities were, and what authority they were going to have. Our position, my position as a physician, was to evaluate, to advise that leader about what I knew about that person's health and their mental health and to see if there was an ascertain, if there was a problem in the way that uh, that, that person was currently experiencing that may interfere with executing those duties. And you heard a very elegant statement from Admiral Smith about what it takes to have a senior leader. The interesting problem that we have is that uh, we have, uh, that our Congress has been AWOL on taking uh, the one step that they could take to best decide, at least start to explore what those criteria could be for what a president should in fact uh, show and demonstrate to be effective. And that's because they have not taken on being able to further specify and define Section 4 of the 25th Amendment. Uh, Paul Summergrad, a former president of the APA, and I wrote about this in 2018. Uh, we said very clearly uh, that this was something that was extremely important as we looked out. I mean, we've had a number of presidents, presidents that have had, that have really already, we know, have had health problems. It doesn't take a lot of imagination, really, to say, at what point in time are we going to have an individual as commander-in-chief who has some problem that clearly is impairing their capacity to function? And who is going to be able to discern that? Well, of course, it's the immediate advisors. It's the people around that, that leader who say, you know, he doesn't track. He doesn't understand what's going on. He's not inquisitive. Frankly, as it was with the case that people felt about Richard Nixon, he doesn't show the character. He doesn't have the, the temperament. He doesn't have the integrity. 
those people need to speak up. And when they speak up, that goes to the Congress, and the Congress goes through the process of the 25th Amendment. Well, we have a completely dysfunctional AWOL Congress. So where does the power lie then? Who do we as military physicians have to speak to? As you've heard, truth to power. That's our role. My job many, many times as an army doctor was to say what nobody else wanted to hear. To go in and say, this person can't do his job. This is going to be dangerous. We've got to do so. Well, you know, Steve, uh, you know, if I say this person's got a mental health problem, that's stigmatizing. You've got to tell me more. And that was my job. And by the way, that's different to say about fitness of, uh, to duty than, in fact, what my, many of my colleagues feel that we circle around diagnosis. It's not about that. It's really about, does this person have the skill sets? They're like an artist or an athlete. Do they have the capabilities to do the job that they're being asked to do? I believe we need to be able to make sure that we make, state that clearly to our public, because the people who need to understand that, if our country's going to go in the right direction, if we're going to be able to save our country, are those young people sitting on the couch who may not want to vote? who have decided to abdicate their roles and, and in my view, their responsibilities as, as, as citizens, or the swing voters. This is something that most people is, is beyond their usual scope of their work and their daily lives. Because most of us function in a very clear way. We know what's best for us. We're now saying, no, this is broader. So we have the issue of fitness for duty, and I think it is different than a diagnosis. I think it's also different than what many of my colleagues do is a forensic evaluation. That's, you've seen that, you've probably seen it on television. You know, is this person insane? Are they competent? Those are different evaluations, and I've done a lot of those over the many years. This is a very, this is specifically about can this person do his job? Now, but the second is dangerousness. How do we see the issue of dangerousness? Uh, which we also have to make a judgment about. And to tell and may explain that this person that we know that we're going to elect, we have a reasonable suspicion and maybe conviction that this person is dangerous. The interesting thing that we have is there, were, there was a circle around President Trump who at times will come and speak and tell the stories about what it was like working with him, about how fit he was and how capable he was in that, in the, in that position. And a, a particular one that stands out is a book by John Bolton, where he's, and uh, so The Room Where It Happened, his, his White House memoir. And uh, he, he talks about, uh, this is, this, he calls or says that the president has sy systematically governed with single-minded instinct for looking at issues entirely through the prism of what is good for him and not what is good for the country. And others advisors have said the same thing, but I think they've made a fatal error, at least one. How hard it is to work with such extreme characters with such autocrats, with such despots, because these people, unfortunately, have a kind of genius about what they do. I heard a lot of noise. They cannot be controlled. They can't be managed or outmaneuvered, and he was not. A few girls are out there and shit.
Um, we know that these people see the world through their out outsized lens. We know that they feel no restraints in terms of exercising power. We know that they are willing to hurt someone else. They're com complete, almost impersonal. Everyone is an object. Everyone is there to be used. We know that. And so we are obligated to say it, to explain it, and that it is dangerous. What's the maximum? See something, say something. And that's what I think is what we're obligated to do going forward. There's one more factor here that we have to take into account. And this is a time to maybe hoist on the man on his own petard. Donald Trump, if elected, and however messy this election would likely be, is going to be 78 years and 220 days old, the oldest person to ever be inaugurated in the office. We've already seen plenty signs of cognitive decline. We know how this plays out. Any one of us who have taken care of family, been around others, and watched that process, we know what that mentality is like. We've listened to him. We've had people say that this is not one of the people presented, men who presented, uh, played him for debate preparation in 2016 and 2020. This is not the same person who I was studying to prepare for the debates. The rambling, the looseness, the failure to grasp details, the failure to be able to talk through issues. This is not the same person. So it is completely expectable that we will see a serious decline if this man is elected to the four years of his office. That should worry everybody. That should worry us all. And it needs to be said. I mean, it was clearly the story and it, and in, and it ended up with President Biden deciding to, not to run anymore. There's a lesson learned from that, and we need to take that lesson and make sure that that's also communicated. So with my fellow military officers and senior leaders, uh, and all of you, I mean, we share our pledge. As officers, we take the oath to the Constitution to defend the country. This is what we think is right. It is our country and what we put it as a priority. And I think it is up to us to speak truth to power. The power rests with the American people and to give them the knowledge and the tools so that they feel that they can independently and effectively make the right decision. And that's what we're here to do. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak up about it. I've written four books and I wrote this one five years ago the cult of Trump and people were not ready to understand that brainwashing and mind control is real and members of the panel said how is this possible my my subjective experience plus 48 years of helping people get out of cults says this is a dissociative disorder this is 300.15 in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association that names cults and brainwashing. And there's mental health professionals are not taught about this disorder or how, what can be done to help people recover. This is a public health emergency. We need to preventively educate everyone about what how to tell the difference between ethical influence and unethical influence. This is called the influence continuum. It's part of my doctoral dissertation. Oh, it's on my website, freedomofmind.com. Okay. All right, what else do you have here? What was the
the raccoons helped us clean up last night. They came out here and got the food you all threw in the gutter. Cease and desist. Fuck off. We use some big words, Mr. Mario. Fuck off, Mr. Mario. I'm at my house. You're the guest. You're welcome to leave. I'm dead serious, though. The little dudes fucking came over here and cleaned it up for me. I was going to do it, but, like, I never got around to it. You can go back in the house. You don't need to be out here. There was a horn honking out here. People honk to, horns. It gets attention. Like, what, what, what was the horn honking for? There's a protective order, sir. Wow, where's the, where the horn, where's the horn honking? Like, someone, does someone need help? Protective order. Stop for us and Let's go now. Mario, let's go. Gonna you heard your boss, bitch. Let's go. She wears the pants in this relationship. You the bottom, boy. It's okay. The judge is going to see all this elder abuse you're doing. Oh, elder abuse. Elder abuse. Cleaning up your schizophrenic hoarding is not elder yeah, abuse, yeah, yeah. you dumb, dirty bitch. How about you, you squatter? Not a squatter. You won't accept rent. Oh. Nigga, I'm a homeowner. I'm a homeowner now. I own my own boat. Let's go, Mario. It's getting late. Go ahead. You know, are you cleaning your car or mine? No, vamos a ir mismo carro. Voy a llevar un freno. Okay. 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 Harassing you? I'm monitoring the labor going on in my house. Order right now. The protective order is gone. There's a protective order. Get out. Full. A I'm monitoring what's going on in my house. Sir, back off. Where are you going? Move. You were just over here. Move. Stop. Go to your place. Go to your room. Go to your other. I'm area. monitoring my shit. Cook, go somewhere else. Stop harassing me. I'm not harassing you. I'm monitoring what's going on in my house. Don't you understand that the that the judge is going to see this? I hope you understand. It's the the ramifications it has. You don't, you don't even care if you're going to prison, huh? Don't worry. This nigga think I'm going to prison on a misdemeanor. Their first plea deal offer was, time, was no fucking jail time, and I, I said care. no. Stop I said no. I know you took the cord off my other portable air conditioner. You're stealing. You know that? You're stole. Bitch, you owe me a bunch of money. Oh, what are yeah. you talking about? The phone's a thousand, the electric bill's pushing two thousand. Shut the fuck up, Ninja Mario. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to my landlord and she owe me a bunch of money. The judge is going to like you violating all the landlord-tenant law and just doing what you want, telling me I'm not a tidget, Midget Mario. Are your immigration papers okay? Are you, do your papers check out, Mario? Yeah, they cut the gas line off the stove, endangering everyone. If that had, if they hadn't been smart enough to turn off the valve, it would have been an issue. Oh, she's got family that could take her in, but they won't have her because of her hoarding. I know her sister and shit. I know her family. Like, she has a home to go to, but she would have to not hoard. And they have kids and stuff, not willing to dig, deal with the pests and shit. She has a rat infestation in her car. In her car. Like, she's mobile. She's a mobile public health hazard. And she works at a fucking old people home.
This bitch gives poison food to the poor. Which is seriously, seriously bad. Because they might be hungry and eat that shit. It's Mr. Wood. You had it right the first time. Niggas fuck around and find out. <laughs>